Well, hello and welcome to the Shadow Proclamation. My name is Paul, and as always, I'm joined by Thomas. Uh, smooth as always, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you're only like 200 episodes in. Um, I mean, how would you know it was coming? How would you know I was going to ask? Uh, anyway. <laughs> We are continuing, if you're joining us for the first time here on the channel, we're watching our way through pretty much all of the history of Doctor Who, um, right from the start up to modern day, and maybe some bits, uh, kind of other uh, other bits of media alongside it, things like Torchwood, Sarah Jane, and other things, we'll get there eventually, um, and maybe a few other bits. Um, if you Thunderbirds. Uh, haven't, Thunderbirds, of course, if you, <laughs> if you haven't, already subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button. That's great for us. It's great to see more and more people coming on uh, board with us. Do share this with other Doctor Who fans. We'd love to have people on board. Um, and as always, there is uh, the comment section below where you can drop your comments about the story itself, the episodes we're watching, and any questions for our end of season reviews. So we're not, I think we've only got one more story after this, um, which will bring us to the end of season five. So if you've got questions for our season five review, not that we've done our season four review yet, um, do chuck those down in the bottom and let us know. Also, just to highlight, in the description, we have our Discord server. So if you want to come and chat about Doctor Who and other things, there's a link there, and you can come and join us on Discord and chat in the forums there with people who are watching these videos um, about Doctor Who, but there's space for other things as well. Um, yeah, have I covered everything there, Thomas? I think so. That was all the, the additional info. Uh, so, yeah, we're about to sit down and watch Fury from the Deep. It was broadcast from the 16th of March to the 20th of April, 1968. Written by Victor Pemberton and directed by Hugh David. Um, none of the episodes exist. Uh, there's none of this uh, six-part story in the BBC archives. So there is a full um, uh, there is a full set of tally snaps, though, from what I understand. But I think we're watching the animated version. I think that's what's on Britbox, so um, that would be quite good. Um, it's the last story to be completely missing out of the classic Who era. Uh, so that's good. We've come over the hump in terms of watching recons and stuff like that. Um, uh, I mean, this always sticks in my head. I don't know why. This is the, it's called Fury from the Deep. This is the first story since The Savages, uh, since, uh, well, The Savages onwards, which has not had the word the at the beginning of it. And actually, this is the only Patrick Troughton story that does not begin with the word the. So there you go. <laughs> that's a great pub <laughs> quiz question, isn't you it? Know, which Patrick Troughton story, if someone says it in your pub quiz, which Patrick Troughton story uh, does not begin with the word the in the title? You can say Fury from the Deep. You know? It reminds so, me of uh, the scene in The Social Network, drop the the. It just exactly, drop the the. It's cleaner. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a six-parter. And uh, actually, because it doesn't exist at all, this is one I've never seen. Oh, wow. Um, so I've not seen any part of it because normally if there's a missing story, I've maybe seen one episode if there were like a surviving story when I had the sort of Lost in Time DVD box set. So I'd seen a lot of, you know, orphaned episodes. But of course, this doesn't have any orphaned episodes at all. It's just there by itself. I've not got the animation on DVD, so I've not seen it, not got around to that. So this is going to be uh, I'm a Fury from the Deep Virgin uh in this moment well, presumably then uh yes this is the animation and presumably then giving the, looking at the titles here this is going to be a black and white version i, I don't know if because nice. on a lot of the dvds now there's a color version of the animation as well so um but presumably brickbox will go for the black and white version yeah we haven't seen too many color animations macro terra and galaxy 4 right galaxy 4 this could be a model shot potentially i imagine yeah victoria Pemble pemberton Victor Pemberton is the writer. <laughs> isn't Victoria, Victoria? Oh, Victoria Pendleton is a cyclist, isn't she? In the Olympics. Uh, yes, that's who you're thinking of. Look at this, I've <laughs> got the TARDIS landing on the water. Oh, and what's that hat he's got? Oh, I'm taking a little boat from it, that's genius. Yeah. yeah is that like a like, I like that, the TARDIS lands on the top of the water and it doesn't sink. And then they just get in it, walk out the door and get in a boat and go. So they did actually find in 2003 a few minutes of um from this story i don't know particularly which episode um but actually it turned out it wasn't it was actually some mute scenes from alternate takes so they weren't actually like oh, from the really? official episode that aired so as a shame that it's lost but yeah i think this was location filming hmm. um without a doubt but uh, whether they filmed it actually where they say they are in the show is we shall find out i've got i found my belgian hey bum. 
Oh, you're too busy chatting. You missed it. Oh my goodness, is that a sonic screwdriver? That's what he just said. It's the sonic screwdriver. Oh, I missed the line. Oh, cool. Too busy talking about your Belgian buns. <laughs> yeah, that is the perfect summary of the shallow proclamation, isn't it? Thomas was so busy talking about his buns that he missed the dawn of a crucial part of the Doctor Who canon. Yeah. I've been, I've been waiting for this uh, so moment filming. for so long. I know, I remember you specifically saying about that. So, uh, apparently, filming was done... Uh, so we had... Botany Bay near Kingsgate. Yeah, that must be it because the other bits look more specific locations rather than beaches. Apparently that shot of the TARDIS being lowered, like being landing on the sea was achieved with a slightly smaller TARDIS uh, hanging on a piano wire from a uh, helicopter. Oh really? So they actually did it? So they actually did do it, so it wasn't a model shot. Or was oh, it, it was a, Well, it was kind of a model shot, but... Um, yeah. A miniature TARDIS, but not an actual model in the sense that we normally mean. Apparently, Patrick Troughton's son, uh, one of his sons, Michael, named this as his best story. So. Oh, really? Oh, that photo in the background. <laughs> That's a little Easter egg there. I thought it might be. But I recognise him. Is, is he a master? Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, I recognise that for some photo ages. Obviously ago. not appeared in the show. <laughs> Something using the pipes. So it's a basilisk. Mm. <laughs> what I love about that, just just talk about parcel tongue there, mm -hmm. is in like the seventh film, where it is, Ron just rocks up to the thing and just makes some vague noises and it opens, doesn't it? I hear Harry talking in his sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's open. <laughs> it was that easy all along. You just say yeah. anything. Billa balla, billa balla, billa balla. <laughs> Zoom connectivity issues. Yeah, your connection is unstable. Yeah. Be in there. Skeptical commandant. <laughs> Bingo. Is this a base? Do you reckon? <laughs> Ooh, you may well be right. With a monster en route to uh, keep it under siege. It's endlessly adaptable. Yeah, definitely. Are you ready, Jamie? Right. Oh, it's alive. Having a rave by the sound of it. Yeah. <laughs> Could I speak with you, please? <laughs> you could he say looks a bit like Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, it does, doesn't he? Boris Khan. I should say the monster. The monster. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster. Very good. I think you'll find that uh, Frankenstein is the uh, name of the, uh, the scientist, not the monster. Uh, <laughs> we know that our viewers are so on it that they will, uh, they will jump on something like that. It's like that when we did the in-person Doctor Who, loads of people commented, "That clock in the background isn't isn't working." <laughs> Some kind of I would say cool. Victoria looks like she's got a weed problem. <laughs> oh, that's a cliffhanger. I was going to say, that's cliffhanger time. And we're actually you can see the colour animation in the background. You can see the colour animation in the background there. Oh, really? Anyway. It's oh, just, just, it was just right yeah. there. There you go. There it is. No, no. It, it, it was there when you stopped it. Like, what was it? In the, in the back, not in the, not in the video, in the <laughs> screen, like the, the menu screen. Oh. <laughs> Oh right! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought you meant that like it, it the color animation was showing like through the black and white one. Sorry, that no, was no. Forget that happened. Um, what are you on? Have you have you been on the weed? Um, no, no I've just been having having a Belgian bun. A Belgian bun. We know all about your buns. Just so distracted by the buns, you didn't even notice the sonic <laughs> screwdriver. You almost lost your buns there. <laughs> 
do you know my favorite word is bunt with a, with a dt bunt. at the end <laughs> a, a bunt cake a bunt cake what's a Have bunt a, cake it's like a cake with a hole in the middle that's a donut isn't it <laughs> <laughs> no like a big cake but it's like oh, the a big cake. you cook it in it has a hole in the middle so it's like, like a, a ring a ring cake yeah yeah oh uh, Oh. Bunt. Um, <laughs> well, you learn something new every day. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was fast. great. I don't think it was good as well, actually. I love... Um, I think the animations sometimes really help these stories um, because they do, as I said at the beginning, they allow you to have the scale and the sets that you probably couldn't have had in the studio or on the budget. I mean, of course, what would have been, I guess, at the beginning when they're on the beach, as that was location, they, that could have looked pretty decent. Because yeah. you can film as much as you like. You're right there. No, you're right. Yeah. It's a... You still think, what, you still think about your bunt cake? What are you doing? Like... Well, so anyways, <laughs> the shallow proclamation with me, Paul. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I lost it for a second. Then. Carry on. Uh, yeah, so I like the I like the setting, basically. the um, And I think the animation allows you to have a lot more of it than perhaps you would have seen in the show. It gives it a grander scale. Um, yeah. I, re- I mean, my favourite thing, probably, if I had to pick something out of all of it, would be the TARDIS landing on the, the water at the beginning. That was and then, good. It's a shame they didn't make a little bit more of it. Um, I guess, I was going to say, in the animation, they could have made more of it, but you, you're constricted, I suppose, by the, the audio that you're working against, aren't you? Um, you know, that you're trying to line up with. So, um, But yeah, the idea that you can land the TARDIS on water and it doesn't sink and actually they have to open the door, step out into a little boat and row to shore, I think is really cool. And the sonic screwdriver. Um, Yeah, which you didn't notice because of your buttons. uh, (laughs) It was quite a simple looking thing, wasn't it? Just a sort of cylinder. I think it was originally a kind of pen light really type looking thing. I like the fact that it's a kind of corporation with that logo. What's it called? The the company? Eh? Esco was it? Esco, something ESGO. like that. So you're you're thinking sort of BP or Shell or something like that, yeah. aren't you? And the pipeline and... and all the chimneys and stuff. So I, I like the fact that there's probably going to be a corporate interest involved at some point, which is always yep. interesting when there's a, a monster attacking. Uh, it highlights what people really value. Um, so I'm I'm I think it's a, a compelling setup. Yeah. Mm. And the yeah the idea of something there's something in the pipes that's a kind of it's a good setup isn't it it's a it's a good sort of trope yeah um, you've got this location where you've got all this pipe work and there's something and we weren't necessarily sure what it was something in the pipes um, although at the moment it looks like what might be in the pipes is some seaweed <laughs> <laughs> big seaweed and foam big seaweed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big seaweed and foam. So yeah, I mean, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, get, it it didn't tease much of the creature, did it? At the end, we just got a sense of some kind of tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> That's some more fury from the deep coming out right there. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and uh, we will see you for part two of uh, Fury from the Deep. Yeah. Until then, bye-bye.